The Scorpion armed reconnaissance jet from Textron Aviation is one of a kind. No other tactical aircraft like it is currently in existence. The manufacturer took it upon itself to develop a unique aircraft to meet a specific need in the market no other aircraft could fulfill. In their confidence, they decided to use their own money against the norm for military aircraft development. Typically, the government foots most of the bill and becomes the first user, but the Scorpion is not a typical aircraft. It can be built right in the US and then easily exported to countries all around the world. At a quarter of the price of an expensive F-16, the Scorpion can cover border patrol, maritime security, drug interdiction, disaster relief, and counterinsurgency warfare roles. It may not have all the bells and whistles of a fully loaded fighter jet, but that is one of many reasons it is such an impressive aircraft. The Project Airland Enterprises LLC had a vision for a new kind of aircraft. The clandestine group of investors sought to create what they believed to be the world's most affordable tactical jet aircraft. In October 2011, they made their move, approaching Textron for a joint venture to bring the concept to life. In just six months, the covert development of the Scorpion commenced, under the guise of the top-secret project SCV-12-1, or simply, the project. A hand-picked team of designers and engineers from Textron, Cessna, and Bell Helicopter were sworn to secrecy and assembled in a discreet location, working tirelessly on the project. Often, they would have to make critical decisions in hours rather than days, all to comply with a single ideal. Speed is paramount. The objective was to create, fly, and sell the aircraft as fast as possible, so as not to miss opportunities. In parallel, all precautions were taken to avoid arousing suspicion from potential competitors, with non-disclosure agreements, local suppliers, and the tight-knit community of Wichita, Kansas, all playing their part in maintaining the project's mystery. Besides, technology from Cessna inventory and other existing and readily available components and hardware were borrowed to facilitate the development. Despite the rush, and even if they could build the aircraft quickly, there was one hurdle left to overcome, finding the right customer. Outside the Lines With military budgets shrinking and aircraft costs skyrocketing, Textron saw a gap in the market. Thus, it was explicitly designed to fill the gap between light turboprop aircraft and expensive land attack aircraft, hoping to find customers in the U.S. National Guard and export markets. In a traditional aircraft development program, the Department of Defense or Military Service would issue detailed requirements. Instead, Textron Airland conducted a thorough market and capability analysis to determine the exact needs of both domestic and foreign forces currently unable to be fulfilled. Years of development and flight testing were expected. Still, the team was determined to deliver the Scorpion as quickly as possible. Instead of an expected four to five years, its development to flight time was nothing short of miraculous, achieving its first flight within a mere 24 months. In truth, in an unconventional, not to say risky, move, the outside contours were built in May 2012, while wing production started in August, meaning the wind tunnel tests were conducted after wing parts were already in the pipeline. And so, after much anticipation, the first prototype built by Cessna was finally unveiled to the world on September 16, 2013, and was almost ready for its inaugural flight. Keeping it low. The Scorpion was designed to be a lightweight, all-composite aircraft for light attack, as well as intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. And it was to be an affordable option for small foreign militaries who could not purchase high-end planes. Initially, the concept was for a single-engine aircraft, but after reviewing 12 different design configurations, the engineers decided on a tandem-seat twin-engine configuration. Despite being a two-seater, it could be flown by just one pilot. It had a retractable nose mount for electro-optical and infrared sensors, reducing drag when not used. One of the significant advantages of the Scorpion is its low cost. The developers claim that the flight hour cost is only $3,000, which is significantly less than any Western purpose-designed turbojet attack aircraft. The Scorpion is also cheaper to buy and operate than most other ground attack aircraft, with each unit costing less than $20 million. This cost is lower than the cost of upgrading an A-10 or F-16. To keep costs low, the developers used many commercially available off-the-shelf components from Cessna's inventory. The demonstrator is powered 
by Honeywell TFE731 turbofans, widely used in commercial business jets. These engines are significantly cheaper than purpose-designed military engines and easier to service. Textron Airland sees a market for up to 2,000 Scorpion jets. Testing The Scorpion went through pre-flight taxi trials in late November 2013 in preparation for its first flight. And finally, on December 12th, it took to the skies for the first time, flying for 1.4 hours. The flight happened 23 months after the Scorpion's conception, and its flight certification program would last for two years. Textron Airland, the company behind the Scorpion, aimed to complete 500 flight hours and, more ambitiously, verify basic performance features by the end of 2014. The initial flight tests were promising, showing positive results in evaluations of performance. Similarly, mechanical and electronic systems proved efficient. By April 9, 2014, Textron Airland announced that the Scorpion had flown for 50 hours over 26 flights. The aircraft had flown as high as 30,000 feet at speeds up to 490 miles per hour and experienced accelerations ranging from 3.7 to minus 0.5 g. In turn, the stall speed was identified as slower than 100 miles per hour. During test flights, pilots reported that the Scorpion was agile, nimble, and powerful, even when flown on one engine. Moreover, its low speed characteristics proved more than decent. It even demonstrated an intercept of a Cessna 182. Yet, incremental modifications were made over the course of testing. Overall, remarkably few issues were encountered, which was attributed to the use of mature, non-developmental systems. A Strike Aircraft On June 1, 2014, a modified Scorpion aircraft resumed flights. The Scorpion then made its debut at the Farnborough Air Show in July of that same year. It had simplified landing gear, increased wing sweep, and new avionics, including hands-on throttle and stick controls. The aircraft also had a modular design that allowed the wings to be removed and replaced with different designs. It is worth mentioning that the manufacturer considers it an ISR and strike aircraft instead of a light attack aircraft. As such, the aircraft is designed to handle non-traditional ISR flights, similar to those performed by U.S. fighters in Iraq and Afghanistan. It can perform armed reconnaissance while cruising above 15,000 feet, higher than most ground fire can reach. Additionally, the aircraft is rugged enough to sustain minimal damage. Textron Airland claims that the aircraft's endurance is optimized for five hours of loitering up to 150 miles away from its base. The Scorpion aircraft is versatile and can be used for light attack, reconnaissance, domestic interdiction, air patrol, and training. However, it is limited to low-threat battlefield missions. Still, with an internal weapons bay that can be reconfigured for different mission requirements, the Scorpion can carry sensors or extra fuel. It can also carry precision-guided munitions with laser or GPS guidance. Its internal payload capacity is 3,000 pounds, and it can also bear an additional 3,000 pounds of ordnance externally on six external hardpoints for various weapons, such as gun pods, missiles, rockets, and bombs. By the end of the summer, the Scorpion would be ready for its ultimate trial. The Outlook In August 2014, the Scorpion aircraft was put to the test in a simulated large chemical spill scenario. The aircraft was flown by a Textron test pilot and was able to circle the affected area for several hours, transmitting high-quality video to U.S. Air National Guard members. The demonstration aimed to showcase the aircraft's intelligence and reconnaissance capabilities and promote its use for Air National Guard missions. The Scorpion aircraft achieved a 100% mission availability rate during the exercise, demonstrating its ability to provide color HD full-motion video and communicate with other aircraft and ground stations. Its success could lead to the Scorpion being adopted for low-threat missions, filling a gap in the market for tactical aircraft, which is especially important for smaller nations, as the Scorpion is a cost-effective option. Later, on December 22, 2016, the first production standard aircraft took to the skies. The company behind the Scorpion reported positive interest from military and paramilitary organizations, with discussions already underway with countries such as Malaysia, Brunei, the Philippines, Indonesia, Bahrain, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. Admittedly, however, the market for light fixed-wing attack jets decreased after the 1980s, as wealthier nations opted for more capable aircraft, and poorer countries turned to turboprops and attack helicopters. It remains uncertain if the Scorpion can outperform these alternatives in terms of range, endurance, low-altitude performance, and sensors. 
Nevertheless, the Scorpion's unique capabilities and cost-effectiveness make it an attractive option for many nations needing a reliable tactical aircraft. Thank you for tuning in to our video. If you crave more gripping and enthralling content, look no further than our Dark Documentaries channels. To stay up to date on our latest releases, hit the subscribe button for Dark Skies and hit the like button. Hit the notifications bell to be the first to know when we drop new content.